Alex, from your experience working with female physique athletes and a large base of female lifestyle clients over the years, what would you say are the keys to growing muscle as a female? There is a, a plethora. And I think that the, the easy way and things that many of you have heard are going to be eat in a surplus and train hard. And that is both very true, but we want to dig a little bit deeper and give you more insight into what we see at physique development be very successful, whether that be with lifestyle clients or with physique competitors specifically. So training wise, moving away from the the hit based uh, training sessions that you may experience within Orange Theory or just chasing the the burn or the sweat. We want to get under heavy loads within your training. We want to follow periodized training that allows for you to progress within different movements as well as improving the execution of different movements that you are uh, utilizing through this growth phase. Um, wherever you want to build tissue, pick movements that you're very good at the execution or movements that you're wanting to get very good at and um, see progression uh, on those movements and continue to facilitate strength through those. Um, but the, the main thing to take away with training is to be uh, on a program that is going to last, not going through and, and following Instagram swipe workouts or anything of that nature uh, that may seem appealing and exciting, but in reality are not influencing your progress to the upteenth degree. Nutrition and cardio. Uh, within nutrition, I think that it is important to understand that you need to track not only in a dieting phase, but also in a maintenance or a surplus phase to ensure the greatest degree of growth is going to transpire. Many athletes, many lifestyle clients that, that do come to us that they state they've been in a, a surplus or a maintenance. And the reality is, is that they've just never tracked outside of the dieting phase. So being consistent within your tracking is going to be an important piece of the puzzle. Um, keeping in cardio is actually something that I think many are surprised by uh, within physique development that we want to do to keep in. Uh, this is going to benefit for a handful of reasons. It's going to help with digestion. It is going to help with overall mental health, getting outside, getting steps in, uh, and allowing for us to keep the caloric intake a little bit higher. Um, so those are the, the first three pieces and I have a, a couple of other points here, but I think that I would like for both of the coaches, uh, here to weigh in as well and, and give any of their thoughts at this point. Yeah. So I love that Alex mentioned cardio as that's something clients are always surprised to hear that we try to keep in and a huge reason for that. He mentioned a few of them there and not only digestion, but for nutrient uptake and being able to truly absorb those nutrients. Um, and it's something as far as when you are eating at either a surplus or at maintenance, a lot of times people will end up feeling sluggish because when they diet, they might feel light on their feet or feel more athletic. And so being able to think about your health as a whole, we're not just looking at pure aesthetics here and the way that we optimize growth is optimize optimizing how your body works. And so making sure that you're putting in the variables that are going to allow your body to be working at top notch is going to be there. So cardiovascular health is an extremely important part. And people just look at cardio and they're like, cardio sucks. I don't want to do cardio. Or they look at it as like, it's a means to an end. I only do it when dieting. But being able to find cardio forms outside of dieting that you really enjoy. So it doesn't have to be uh, cut and dry as far as I'm going to be on the Stairmaster for this amount of time, or I'm going to be doing uh, battle ropes for this amount of time. Maybe during a prep or during a deficit, you do track that a little bit closer. But for me, it's a huge thing as far as getting steps in, making sure that I'm doing things that I enjoy moving my body because the strictness within a dieting phase is there for a time and place, but it allows me to have some more flexibility outside of it. So whether it's going on a walk with my friend and not worrying about, oh, my heart rate is at a certain beats per minute, or being able to go and do, uh, there's a fun place here called Activate Games where you can go and do all these like laser courses and stuff. And that would be a form of moving your body and being able to get in some activity without looking at it as like, oh, if my coach still prescribes cardio. I'm still doing this. Why am I doing this when it comes to muscle growth? And some other great points that I'm just going to like 
really zone in on that Alex make is being able to make sure you're spending time eating in a fashion to support your training and growth. Um, so not constantly dieting on low calories, not constantly competing show after show. Um, it's something that being able to make sure that your body, again, is functioning at peak performance is going to be the best when it comes to being able to diet efficiently. It comes to being able to take time away from dieting. And so you need to get efficient at building muscle and being able to showcase that the next time that you go into your diet. We live in a very diet centric society. And so being able to look at muscle growth and not look at it as, oh, it's time to get fat, but it is a time to um, really hone in on some different goals that you're going after. Um, and another thing when it comes to muscle building, that's really, really helpful, especially for females is being able to set goals, which we are going to be talking about or creating habits that are going to be sustainable later in this podcast. But it's something that people kind of get lost because within dieting, it's very easy to see results. In 10, 12 weeks time, you can see some pretty crazy results. But when it comes to muscle building, it's not always the case and it can be very discouraging. So setting goals along the way to make sure that you're getting to that goal building, which I see firsthand from Austin and Alex and then myself, because I, I know how I coach as well, but being able to set up each client and make sure, okay, what's our goal moving forward? Do we have strength goals that we're going after? Do we have um, performance goals that we're going after? And being able to set those goals along the way, because muscle building does take a longer amount of time. And if you do have those goals, it's going to make it a lot more efficient and set you up for a lot more success. Yeah. Great points by you both. And, um, you know, I'm going to kind of extract a few points. I made some notes here. Uh, so the first one I want to kind of touch on here is a point that Alex, um, some points that Alex made. And it's not just about what you're doing, but also how you're doing it, right? So exercises are great. Um, we know exercises to sort of train certain muscle groups. Um, you know, like this, we know the squat trains the quads and the glutes and, and stuff like that. Um, but that only goes so far, right? So I'll repeat, it's not just what you're doing, but how you're doing it, right? So you could have a textbook program with all the right movements in there. And albeit, so this is why we talk about techniques so much, right? So if you go to our Instagrams, if you go to our YouTube channel, we're always talking about execution. We're always talking about technique. And it's because it's such a cornerstone of creating tension and it's such a cornerstone of the goal especially if you're looking to build strength build muscle and both of those also feed into your ability to lose body fat to the degree of keeping strength and keeping muscle during the process right so that's why technique and exercise execution is the cornerstone of kind of what we do and really any client we get in whether that's a physique competitor or a lifestyle client we're always trying to adjust, um, we're always trying to address that cornerstone, right? What is that elephant in the room? And if we're not, we can have everything right on paper, but if we're not doing it the way we need to be doing it, and we're not executing those movements the way we need to, and placing a significant amount of tension on those kind of those target tissues, we can't expect our true goal to sort of come to fruition, especially as efficiently as it could have right? So we need to ensure the stimulus is sufficient on a given muscle, right? So ensure that stimulus or that stress that we're trying to put on those target tissues is sufficient. Um, and so I think one technique um, I know I, I like to use is, you know, if you're new to training or, or if you're new to kind of really paying attention to this stuff, choosing movements with less, you know, task failure, right? So if you don't have a coach or you're a coach yourself, um, or you're just looking to address some of these issues, maybe if you're trying to grow your quads or you're trying to grow your glutes, maybe we kind of break these down. Um, and as we work on our squat technique, for example, we also sort of implement some other movements that are a little bit more single joint or isolation based to get a little bit more volume specifically to those muscle groups, right? So we're not relying as heavily on like a squat, for example, to really stimulate our quads and our glutes, we work on that technique. We work on mastering that movement pattern, but we also start to implement um, while we're doing that some other stuff to kind of assist with some volume work in the process. And so these are just some tactics, and that's that's one thing I want to kind of to extract there. Um, and then one thing they both touched on 
was sort of the concept of keeping a high energy flux. So always keeping in mind, um, we're usually pretty aware with uh, calories in, and we're usually pretty aware with the concept of calories out. Uh, but put in, I'll put it in this context. If our goal isn't to move the least amount possible so we can eat less calories, right? Or to eat as little as we can and then move as little as we can, right? We're built to move. We're built to be active people. We're built to be active. So keeping a high energy flux, right? So that's the more we're able to output productively without being in excess, the more we're going to be able to eat. So that's something to keep in mind, right? So keeping a high energy flux. So when we talk about um, like NEAT, for example, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, or basically non-exercise related movement, it's really so we can up that movement as we all are more sedentary with our jobs. And it's not just about steps. Um, steps have become very popular and steps are just a really easy way to sort of manage if you're not really sure how much you move throughout the day. Um, but also like getting a standing desk is a great way to kind of get more movement, cleaning your house, cooking, all of these fidgeting, like all of that is movement. Um, and steps are just a good way to sort of balance the equation and counteract that, especially like when you're in a dieting phase, because your body sort of adapts and responds itself and naturally to move less to conserve energy. So it's sort of a subconscious behavior. And so with steps, that's why that's kind of popular is with steps, you can just, well, I know I at least need to get 10,000 steps today um, because I know when I'm sitting at my desk, I'm not going to fidget anymore because I don't, I'm not in an excess of calories any longer, right? So the deeper you get into your deficits, um, the deeper you kind of get into these fat loss phases, the more intentional the movement needs to get. And getting steps is pretty intentional. Um, and the last few things I'll touch on here is kind of just breaking the cycle, um, like Sue touched on, kind of trying to break the cycle of the cut and bulk uh, mentality and, and understand that maintenance is very productive. Um, and that doesn't mean you're not in a, a, a muscle growth phase or something. Like if your goal is to build muscle or strength or both, you can do so while at maintenance or just slightly above, right? We don't need to be in this excessive, depending, I mean, each individual is slightly different and that's something that we would address, but, um, or you could address on your own or with your clients. But I think getting, it's healthy to sort of get out of these cycles of, well, I'm either cutting or I'm bulking, right? So understanding that there are times to, to think about fat loss phases or cutting or, or bulking or, or building muscle, but understand that also maintenance can be very productive. Um, so don't for kind of, don't forget about that middle puzzle piece there that is absolutely a part of the equation and it can help you kind of stand the test of time long-term. Um, and the last thing is just health. If you're in a muscle growth built, you know, a muscle growth phase, if you're in a, if you're around maintenance or in a, even in a surplus in this regard, um, and this is even more, um, important if we're in a deficit, because as calories goes down, the amount of food variety we typically have, the amount of chances we get to hit the target go down. So health is very, very important. Getting in your micronutrients, your vitamins, your minerals, um, especially when we're in a surplus, right? So this is kind of where a dirty and clean bulk, or if you think about that or, or keeping it clean or keeping, you know, whatever it is, there's going to be times, depending on who you are, you may just have to eat more, um, but also understand that fruits and veggies are still an asset. Um, and all of those foods that we see as like really nutrient dense still need to make up a majority of our calories the best we possibly can. So keeping health kind of at the utmost um, importance within that hierarchy during, even during a muscle growth phase. And Alex, you said you had a few more you wanted to touch on. Do we cover them all or do you have? A few no, left? I still have, I still have my, my final two. And um, these are probably going to be the most important of the two points that I'll make. And, and, the, and the first being overall hormonal health. 
uh, ensuring that everything from a, a sex hormone production as well as thyroid function are in an optimal place. Many of the clients that come to work with us uh, may not have had a, a, a cycle for uh, an extended period of time. So we are working to restore their hormonal health or restore their cycle in that uh, growth phase. And if you're able to restore sex hormone production, your likelihood of adding more muscle tissue is going to be extremely elevated. So making that the forefront of your uh, concerns and, and your goals um, is going to be uh, immensely helpful. And uh, when we look at, at thyroid production, uh, this is going to be something where if someone's chronically dieting, we're going to see some down regulation in thyroid function. And so getting labs and, and getting to look at the specific numbers is going to be immensely helpful for you uh, because you could be you know starting a race with two flat tires, essentially. And we want to get there. We want to be a uh, well-oiled machine. We want to have the gas tank full. All the tires are in well-inflated state. And uh, we're, we're riding in the Corvette on our way to more muscle tissue. Um, the other thing and the last thing that I'll touch on is, is mental health. Uh, mental health is going to be a massive driving portion of you being able to sustain this period of time because this is not going to be a quick 10 to 12 week uh, process. This is going to be months on, on end and uh, not allowing for yourself to get caught up in Instagram where Becky and your, your friend Tanya are both in a dieting phase and they're shredded and you're like, damn, I wish I was shredded. And you get caught up in the fact of like, well, I should probably do that because right now, instantaneously, I want to also be in their shoes. Um, and so scrolling less on Instagram is going to be helpful. Doing the the self-care things are, are going to be important as well. Just maximizing your overall mental health is going to be important. And then understanding that uh, bad body image days are going to be a, a part of the entire experience. No one is going to have a hundred percent score on their positive body image day in and day out, whether they're dieting, whether they're in a surplus, any of the options. And so rolling with the punches, understanding that there's going to be ebbs and flows to it and sticking to your ultimate goal is going to be important. Yeah, I can definitely concur on not a hundred percent body image days. Uh, one last thing I, I want Alex to touch on just, I was going to ask you about comparison because I know you have a lot of athletes that are on Instagram that are looking at what other people are doing, or even just watch what you post of other competitors or other clients and just want to achieve the same results. But what would you say as far as supplements for muscle building, um, not talking about PEDs or anything of that, but just for general health to be able to optimize it, what would you say are things that you would recommend for clients or anyone listening? The, the base things I would say is that um, maximizing just your internal health, Austin spoke on uh, vitamins and minerals being a big piece. So if you feel as though your veggie and fruit consumption is low, getting in a, a greens product, getting in a, a multivitamin is going to be your base there um, to make sure that internal function is, is maximized. Then from there, I think that creatine would be immensely beneficial for uh, women specifically. Three to five grams of creatine monohydrate is going to... Um, uh, do the trick for you on that front. And then just having adequate protein consumption uh, is going to be a big piece. So having a protein powder may be helpful for you uh, in, in the long run. Um, and then potentially something that we supplement with uh, with many clients is that uh, a sleep product will probably be even a greater assistance to your overall muscle growth as we all lead very stressful, very busy lives and being able to wind down at the end of the night and maximize having you know an immense amount of sleep is going to be a big driver for all individuals listening as well as physique development athletes. Yeah. Train hard, recover harder. <laughs>